up and help you to be what God intended for you to be. Now, I'm not going to drag out a service because we have service again today at 4 o'clock. Amen. We want to try to get out of here as early as possible. So we're going to get right into the Word. Is that right? Amen. Is that all right? Amen. All right. Okay, go with me quickly. So we have your swords in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Y'all get Amen. God has got a divine plan for our life. Uh huh. How many believe that? Amen. Betcha. How many believe the enemy got a plan for your life? Amen. You may call him Satan, Shaitan. Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to call him, he's got a plan for your life too. But God's got a greater plan for your life. How many know that? Amen. Now, most of us in this building have grown. Amen. And we, and we answer to no one. And we let no one dictate what we should do. Is that right? So we grow. Amen. And you go where you want to go, say what you want to say, do what you want to do. Ain't that right? Because you're wrong, right? But I don't care how grown you are, I'm sure. You may call him God. Whatever name you call him, it doesn't matter. But know this one thing, we all got the answer to him. Whether you live or whether you die, you're going to have the answer to him one day. Now, why not be on good terms with that force? Because when you are on good terms with God, and you got a line straight through, and there's no interruption, when you get in trouble, you can just dial the number and get straight through. But some people, they live a life without God, without this line of communication, and when trouble comes, they look for someone with a phone. <laughs> that can dial his number. Y'all ain't here. And won't have no interruptions. But we, as a people, have gone so far from God, and we need to find our way back. In Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, and the 8th verse, it says, And thou shalt return. Well, Lord, I didn't know I went nowhere. Uh -huh. Well, we all went somewhere. I don't care if you've been in church 30 years. You still ain't where you ought to be in God. I don't care if you've been in church 50 years. You still ain't where you ought to be in God. Why? Because you're in a mentality that somebody else gave you. That's right. What did I say? You're in a mentality that somebody else gave you. Somebody taught you how to worship God. God didn't. Somebody taught you how to give. God didn't. Oh, get quiet. Somebody taught you how to be subservient. God didn't. Now, God didn't teach you these ways. Somebody else taught you these ways, and they were not God's ways. Y'all ain't here. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the Creator Himself. So we all got to return back because we all been dead mentally and spiritually. Now, all of us in our lives at some point, we've been graced European Christianity. And when we went to church, we saw the stained glass windows with Jesus and the angels. Talk about it. And we were given Sunday school campus. I know I was. And I saw Jesus. And I saw the little children following Jesus. And that Jesus didn't look nothing like me. Didn't have a culture like me. Didn't have a mentality like me. But yet, I was subservient to the one that was teaching me this. And you know if an enemy won't treat you right, what makes you think he won't teach you right? Now if he won't teach you right, 
What makes you think you going to feed you right? That's right. Uh-huh. right. So that means you got your mind, you got your mouth, and you got your body in your enemy's house. Uh-huh. And God wants you to return to him. Amen. And that's why he said, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you unto myself. And now that God has blessed us with this great ministry, I'm breaking ground, I'm breaking yokes, I'm breaking all types of barriers in people's lives. That world broke, and I'm telling them the truth. For the first time, the black man has heard the news that he hasn't heard since he's been here 440 years. What does that mean, Brother Davis? That you are a God. And that you don't need Satan. All right, come on now. Bring it out. See, this is something that the bishops in the Roman Catholic churches and all these religious institutions don't want the world to know. This is why they teach, the doctrine they teach, to colonize your mind and to bring you down and make you subservient to their doctrine that they gave you. Uh-huh. Not the true doctrine that God wants you to hear what Jesus taught. Y'all ain't here. Yeah. But man is a God. I didn't say it. Do God. Yeah. Psalms 82 and 6 said, Ye are gods, but you shall die as men. Right, right. Why are you going to die as men? Because you're not conscious that you're God yet. Mm-hmm. And when you become conscious that you are a God, sickness and disease cannot stay in your body. Come on, come on. When you become conscious that you are a God, then you cannot stay in poverty. When you're conscious that you are a God, then no one can disrupt your comfort zone. Amen. In Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's your comfort zone. And you don't let nobody come into that comfort zone and invade your peace. Amen. When you know who you are. Amen. See, the scripture said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And if you don't have knowledge, you don't know where you came from. And if you don't know where you came from, you sure don't know where you're going. Are y'all here? Because you're like a tree without roots is dead. And if a tree ain't got any roots, you might as well cut it down and chop it up and cast it in the ground. Are y'all here? Shout out to man. But I'm telling folks, and a lot of preachers don't like me telling it. I was telling it on the radio. They were calling me and telling me to shut up. But I'm going to keep on telling it. Because God gave me the boldness to tell it. I'm going to tell it. They will tell you, well, you're wrong. What proved me wrong? Prove it. Come on. You ain't trying to prove me right. Come on. So prove me wrong. Show me in your book what God needed saving. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shout out to you, man. Now, if you are a God, why is it that you need to be saved? Because they want to keep you under their control and keep their pockets lined with brain back. Y'all ain't here. See, church is about money. It ain't about salvation and deliverance and general Holy Ghost and all that. It's about money. That's the bottom line. If you wouldn't pay he wouldn't preach. Okay. Right. 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 You didn't pay, now I ain't getting paid by it. The money will keep me here. I've been with a long time. Because the money show sure ain't keeping me here. Y'all ain't here. So I'm not preaching. I'm not bringing out this for money. I'm bringing out because my people are dead mentally and spiritually. And I see nobody trying to wake them up. I see no churches in the city of Dallas, and matter of fact, all around the country are telling people the truth of who they are and their relationship with God, and there's no heaven that you go to when you fly away. Heaven is a state of consciousness. There's no hell to go to. Hell is a state of consciousness, and it's right here where the people have to Going to hell. Don't you know in ancient times they went to the tombs in Egypt 
and they saw the writings on the wall, they saw the writings of the four monkeys, they had the fire, they can turn it up, they can turn it down, and this fire represents symbolically trials that you go through. And the fire will be turned up in your trials and your tribulation. And the European interpreted as a place of hell, don't tell me that is wrong. And there is error. Yes, sir. And and heaven is a place and the state of your mind. You can have heaven or you can have hell right here. It is your choice. No matter what happens when we die, you go to another plane of existence that you qualify for. And if you chose not to develop yourself on a spiritual and mental level here, yes. then you qualify for that level when you die. And you on that level with those people, they're on that level. Just right. like in school. Right. If you stay in the first grade, you're going to be with the first grade. Right. Right. You go to the second grade, you're going to be with the second grade. Right. And if you don't pass the second grade work, they're not going to pass you to the third grade. Right. Y'all ain't here. Right. So some of you been in the third grade. I began to make African 
my daddy was left. I didn't know I could do that. I made the clock on the wall back there, that African continent, with my hand. I sketched it out of leather. I made a clock out of all y'all here. I made faces in leather and painted the different colors. That was one of my crafts. And then I got back on the sewing machine. I used to sew cool foods and African outfits. I didn't know I could do all that. Shout out, Jay, man. And I'm about to get into cobbler making, get into shoe making business. See, a lot of you black folks, you got crowns and arts and talents, but you're working for the man, getting poor and poor. Why don't you use your craft and get rich for yourself? Get your hands up and shout. See, they ain't gonna ever admit to you that you are a great asset to them. That's all. Because we were great access to them in slavery. If it wasn't for us, America wouldn't be what she is today. Shout out to you, man. And see, without you today, the industrial system would be nothing. Because we, we are the forerunner. We are the groundbreaker. Are y'all here? We are the architects of America today. And without us, America would not exist. And they know that. And we black folk that been here in America 440 years, we are the salvation to the whole world. Yes. Amen. Look at this strong black brother. This brother knew who he was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In ancient times, they feel like time because black men, in ancient times, they were 10 feet and 25 feet tall. Are you see? They didn't need no drugs. They didn't need no alcohol. They didn't need no artificial substance or know who they was to be accepted. They knew who they were. They knew they were God. And they stood up like God. And they feel like God. Because they were God. But slavery did something to us. It relegated us down to Negro. Come on. Colorful. Queen. Well, That's the product of someone else. And whoever made you a nigga got to be a nigga. As they say, it takes a nigga to know a nigga. So whoever made us a nigga must have been a nigga. Whoever said we were three fields of a human being, they must have been three fields. That way you hear. Whoever said we can never learn, we can never succeed, they're the ones that will never learn and never succeed. That's right. Just twist it around. They said black is evil. But twist it around. Twist it around. White is evil. Come on. Oh, shout out to you. If you look in the dictionary, if you don't believe me, when you go home, look under the definition of black, and it will show you everything derogatory, evil, black ball, black male, all this stuff. When you look at white, it says girl, unhonest, blameless. That's a lot. In ancient times, whenever they saw something white, they knew it was the devil. And they ran from it. Yes, sir. But see, when they got in power, they transferred that around and said everything black is of the devil and it's evil. And everyone on this planet that look at us and see our color and see our personality and we're black, they said we're evil. Yes, we're nothing. We're shirtless. We're lazy. We ain't no good. Come on, come on. But see, somebody got to tell you who you are. Somebody got to raise you up. Somebody got to get you back to God. I'm like out here. Because during slavery, 300 years, they plowed up our way back to God. Come on now. But see, there's still some remnants of our culture yes, sir. in us today. Amen. Look at the rappers. Come on. They taking it to a new level. Yeah. Y'all ain't here. You better listen to some of that rap. All right. Because they saying something today. I don't want to listen to that rap. You better open up your ears and hear. Because the rappers got the ear of the young folk today. And all they're doing is rhyming like we did when we were coming up. It's rhyming. That's all. All y'all hear. But they put the messages in the rhyme and trying to speak to the God man that's in it. I ain't talking about 
talking about the negative stuff. I'm talking about the positive stuff. Yeah. KRS one, took it down production, and the brothers that didn't positive messages out. Oh no, he listen to them brothers Amen. because they will tell you something. Yeah. Because you need to know that you are the salvation of the world. Why do you think they're building so many prisons for you? Because they want to imprison God. They don't want to keep God locked up. They don't want to keep God ignorant. They don't want to keep God drunk. They don't want to keep God on drugs. They don't want to keep you sexually active so you can kill yourself. Participate in your own destruction. But see, God's always got a prophet. God always got somebody with a vision that he will raise up to make known who you are. See, you think you're a chicken. You scratch around in a chicken yard. When in reality, you're an eagle. And you're supposed to be flying high above the clouds. You know? So I'm here today to set you free out of the chicken bone and make you free with the word. Make you free with the word so you can soar like an eagle. Yeah. Come on now. And know your true habitation. Yeah. And know your relationship between God yeah. and who you are. Yeah. Now, your first development is to know who God is. Come on now. Come on, T. Your Sunday school teaching is the result of finding out who God is and who Jesus is. Uh-huh. And Christ. Come on. Come on. Your sector is finding out who you are. Yes, sir. And that's where people stop. But I know about God, but you don't know about yourself. Come on. Come on. Let's talk about it. Because you have limited knowledge of who you are by the Bible and by the teachers that have taught you, but when you find out who you are, then you will have total access to who God is. Because God is in you. He walks in you. He talks in you. And he's always been there. Right there. The prostitute selling her body out there. God is in her. Oh, she don't know it. Yet. Come on. The twerk head with the wine bottle this room. God is in him. But he don't know yet. The brother out there selling drugs to our people. God is in him. But he don't know yet. The don't take up. God is in that person. But he don't know it yet. But when they find out, they put away the drugs. Yeah, right. They stop the selling. Yeah, right. They stop selling their body. They stop smoking cigarettes. They stop abusing themselves with mankind. They stop abusing others and killing and destroying the nation. And begin to build it up. Because we are people so far from God and they hedged our way back to God up and didn't want to tell us where we belong. We knew we belonged somewhere. They called us color at one time and they called us Negro. I ain't never seen no land called Negro land. I ain't never seen no land called color land. Talk about it. Y'all ain't here. Let's talk about it. I've heard of a land called Africa. Somebody said, well, I'm not no African. I'm not American. I was born and raised in America. I'm not American. Come on, talk about it. Well, you know, you can put biscuits in the oven. They're not going to come out chicken. Shout out to you, man. Once an hour, always an hour. Yes, you did. You left your mind. Stop. Yeah, you did. King Tarakai, his brother, he was a tough brother. White folk couldn't deal with him because he was smart. He had his head on straight. He knew who he was. He knew who God was. He was a freak. 
to this tonight. And that's why they have to destroy brothers like this with that headdress on. That's royal headdress that we used to wear in ancient times. Are y'all here? And the Cleopatra they show you, she was black. She wasn't white. She wasn't pale face. Black was Cleopatra was black. Samson was black. Y'all ain't here. This was black. Because we've been sleeping giants for thousands of years. Not only here in America for 440 years, but we've been sleeping giants for thousands of years. Now it took them thousands of years to get us in the condition we're in today. See, this doesn't happen 400 years. This happened thousands of years. And see, we gotta look back at history at Constantine. Constantine in 325 AD, he, he saw there were two religions in the land that he was in, one called Hesus and one called Christus. Come on. And they were at each other's foot saying, well, we're the right religion. No, we're right there. And Constantine said, look here, we got to do something here. I tell you what, I'm going to call my 400 bishops together and we're going to make a religion and make everybody be it. So he called his bishops together and they come together and nobody seemed like they could agree. So he cast them out to look here. We gonna bring together a religion and we gonna get a God and we gonna call his name Jesus Christ. They took the God of the Hesus and changed that to Jesus. And the Christus, they changed it to Christ and called him Jesus Christ. Now, there ain't no J in the Hebrew alphabet. There ain't no W in the Hebrew alphabet. And Jesus was a Jew, and the Jewish religion was the first religion, or the first concept of religion. So if it wasn't out of J or W, then there ain't no name Jesus. Yahshua Christus, Christ. Come on. And Christ is not a person, but Christ is a title. Come on. Shout out to you, man. Amen. Are y'all here today? Amen. I'm just about to. But Christ is the anointed one. Uh -huh. And when you are anointed, Come on. You don't stay here. All right. See, the anointing will wake you up and cause you to go forth and do the things that you're supposed to do. Are y'all here? Yeah. Shout out to you, man. Yeah. But God is asking us to return. I'm going to get on that Constantine. I ain't too ready yet. But, but God wants us to return to Him. Because we've gone away so far. And we don't know our way back. But I'm here to show you your way back. Amen. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand yeah. and in the fruit of thy body mm -hmm. and in the fruit of thy camp and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice for thee for good as he rejoiced over thy father. Uh -huh. So we gotta do something. We gotta stop being cowards, number one. Amen. We gotta start being men again. Look around the church today. Where are the men?
You know, when a nation will come to attack another nation, when they attack and destroy the men, then the women were the what? They call it in the Bible, booty or the pride. Or the merchandise. So whenever a man has been brought down low and lost his self-esteem, which the black man have today, you won't see him too much in church. You'll see him a lot on the streets drinking wine, smoking crack and cocaine, sipping cocaine. And you'll find them playing dominoes and cars and not concerned about their future. Not only in the community, but the world. When they've been violated that way, they have been conquered. And the average black man don't want to admit that he's been conquered. And that the white man treats him like a boy, and a lot of times he acts like a boy. Going to him with his head in his hand, head all bowed. And even though you may have a gun, you may drive a fancy car, but you're still a boy in his eyes. And he will never recognize you. I don't care how powerful you get. I don't care if you got $50 million, he still will not recognize you as a man. Hold him power. They gave him that power. Yeah, yeah. They still didn't recognize him yeah. as a true leader. No. But yet in secret, they go back into the sorts of history and find the tactic of cannibal, which was a black man right. that overcome and brought down the Roman government. Uh, they look at the tactic of cannibal. Mm -hmm. Oh, getting quiet. The yard is out the truth. Yeah. Whenever they want to win a battle, they always ask the black folks. Civil War, Earl Reagan War, First World War, Second World War, all the wars in between, they always called on us. They would always put that ahead, right? And without us, I don't think they would make it. So look at the history. We ain't where we should be. Are we ain't where we want to be. Uh -huh. But you better thank God we ain't where we used to be. All right. And you know where we used to be. Are you going back to that place? Some of y'all ain't never seen that old movie. How do you shut her out? Yes, Come on in. Maze, Johnson, Rutgers. See, I was a, a Johnson myself. I was a bus boy myself. I carried on the golf course. But if something me would never let me yell. I would never say, sir. When I was young, I guess I must have always been rebellious. Come on. Hey, boy, come here. I was old, but I wouldn't be answered the boy. But yet, they look at you as a child. Even if you're 50 years old, you're still a child. I'm going to tell you the truth. But we ain't going back to those days, no. Now, whenever you hear somebody that's in power, and come on TV and say, we want to take everybody back to the good old days, you guys are old. And you know what? He talking about the good old days when you were in your place. And those days will never be again because America is turning brown. I said America is turning brown. And I'm sure by the 21st century, it's going to be black. Amen. I'm up. Amen. 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 I didn't give you all what you could receive. 
I gave you a portion because all that I have here, you couldn't receive. See, I have to feed the babes and feed those that are on me. Right. And those that are on me, they understand every word I say. For those that still on milk, the babe desire the sincere milk of the word. And they may grow their mind. And hopefully, something I said today will help you grow. And become aware and become conscious that you are a God. And you don't have to be in a condition someone else dictates for you. Because you choose your own destiny. Isn't God good? How many enjoyed the word today? Give him a great big hand.